people who expect more and demand for better. So I'm sure some of you will have loads of questions for our next speaker. So please write down any questions that you have on the pieces of paper that were given to you when you entered the venue. And just hand them over to us and we'll uh, ask the questions. So is everyone ready? Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Yes! I think they're hungry. <laughs> the food will be coming soon. Sue. Giving the talk is a man who has over 14 years of experience with digital. He started the new media division of TV5. He put up Unbox.ph, one of the country's top gadget sites, and he is currently the vice president for digital strategy and consumer disruptive business at PLDT and Smart. He's a bit of a renaissance man, huh? This pioneer is here with us tonight to share his unique insights on the digital sphere and the consumers who are shaped by it. Everyone, please put your hands together for Mr. Carlo Oakley. Uh, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I have a feeling that the question I'll get is, why is the internet? <laughs> uh, that's, ever since we started giving talks under PLDT, I've been with PLDT and Smart uh, for a little over a year now, and every time I would give talks in conferences like this, it's the number one question that pops up. So uh, within the talk, siguro I'll answer it now so you don't have to write it on paper. I will give you the non-press release version. <laughs> okay, my one? So I'm going to Okay, so Gabe. So to get started, I just want to share with you guys a quote from Steve Jobs. You get closer than ever to your customers. So close so that you tell them what they want before they realize it themselves. And I think that captures the spirit of what it is that we want to talk uh, about this afternoon. Again, very quickly, uh, I'm Carlo Oglet. To those who are still on Twitter or who are on Instagram, uh, this is my handle. Would love to connect with you guys. Uh, if you have questions that I'm not able to answer, we'd be more than happy to get engaged with you online. As mentioned earlier, I'm a digital entrepreneur. I have several websites that I manage. Uh, I consult for several startups. And on top of that, I also work uh, with the leading telco in the country, uh, PLDT and Smart. That, and I love sneakers, and I love cats. Importante po yun. Pag tingnan niyo yung IG ko, maraming pusa doon na cute, tsaka maraming magandang shoes. Importante yan kasi it keeps you sane. Di ba? We all need some sort of outlet uh, when it comes to work. For me, it's just so happened. It's, our, it's my cute cat and the shoes that I love buying. But anyway, uh, just a random thing. So again, my name is Carlo. Um, I currently run a site. It's called Unbox.ph. Uh, it's the leading, or one of the leading technology and gadget sites in the country. So we do gadget reviews, uh, smartphones, uh, tablets, laptops, and all of that stuff. Uh, and apart from that, as mentioned earlier, uh, I am currently, well, I used to be in advertising. I used to work for Den Suhaime Saifu. I was one of the partners and then eventually sold the agency. And that's the time I joined uh, PLD Dane Smart. Now, why am I sharing this with you? Very quickly, one of the most important things that happened in my career is I found myself at the intersection of being a tech journalist and being in advertising. That's important because I was able to travel the world several times over at no expense to myself or to the companies that I worked with because I would be invited uh, by Google, Facebook, Uber, Airbnb, and whatnot to be able to listen to them on what the latest trends are, what their newest products, and all of that stuff. And that gave me a really nice perspective of how trends are going globally and what those trends are and how they apply to the Philippines. And yun yung pag-uusapan natin this afternoon. What are those key trends with regards to customer experience and why it's important uh, for everyone? Just a few pictures that I want to share with you guys. This is me at the Google headquarters in Mountain View. Uh, this is a selfie with the CEO of Google. His name is Sundar Pichai. Uh, hindi po kami close. Nakita ko lang siya, tinakbuhan ko siya, and sir selfie. Hindi siya ka nakatanggi. Siguro dahil laki kong mamang tumatak, pupunta sa kanya. Uh, so he was nice enough to, to do this one. Also did some time uh, going to Facebook to listen to them and learn about what are the new things that are happening there as well. I don't have a picture with Mark Zuckerberg. He got the next best thing. Uh, it's a picture with Sheryl Sandberg uh, of Facebook. So again, that gives you guys a, a glimpse of the, the view that I have when it comes to digital and the trends that we have, uh, or at least globally. And again, apart from that, uh, I'm a very happily employed telco guy as well. Uh, if there's one thing I learned from my grandfather, because uh, 
Uh, my, my grandfather, by the way, used to be the, the late uh, Senator Blas F. Ople. And one thing that he mentioned to me is, you cannot scream at the system and it will just fix itself. You have to be to go inside the system, be part of the solution, and try to fix it. I've been one of the most vocal critics of telcos for the longest time. I was one of those people just shouting. When I had the opportunity to be part of the company to try to fix things and to try to improve it, I took my chance. So that's why I'm in the company today. So if you guys have any concerns later on, maniwala kayo, I might be very more, more, more than happy to talk to you to see how we can help and fix things that you have with regards to customer experience. So let's get started. Of all the things, when it comes to all of the trends that I saw, the most important trend coming to the Philippines is really the experience economy. Medyo late po tayo sa Pilipinas. We're three to five years behind when it comes to global trends. And that's a good thing. Because as marketers, we have a crystal ball. We know what will happen. We already know what the trends are. We know that IoT is around the corner. We know that consumers are more demanding. We know what it is that they want, what's the best way to be able to get in touch with them when digital becomes a big thing. We know that e-commerce is coming. All of those things are just around the corner. And the good news is all the best practices are already done. Tapos na. It's in the US, it's in the UK, it's in other markets that are more developed. And what we'll be talking about, the experience economy, is absolutely critical. Because if there's one key message I want you guys to take away today, it's that in the experience economy, selling is not enough. A transactional relationship with your customers of just selling the product and getting the money is no longer enough. Because in this day and age, customer experience is your biggest competitive advantage. Because your consumers are more demanding than ever and they want things, services and products now, now, now. And the simplest mistake that you can do can blow up into a PR nightmare. And sometimes the best thing that can prevent things like those from happening is having good uh, like PR capital of goodwill with your consumers and customers. I remember just recently, uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, cats. And I'm sure you guys have seen the viral story going around of Chandra Laporte uh, with regards to the cats that were relocated and stuff like that. So again, just an example of something that you would think is harmless, but suddenly it would just blow up and become a PR nightmare. So let's get started. Just to quickly illustrate how fast the world has changed. This is the very first, I don't know if it's the first, but the visit of Pope John Paul a few decades ago. What are the people holding up? Yellow flags. This is the visit of Pope Francis. Just I think a couple of years back. And tingnan po natin ang hawak nilang lahat. Hindi na po yellow flags. Cellphone na po. Si Manong Pulis naka-iPad pa. Social. Now, while this is a good thing, and I'd like to take this opportunity as well uh, to talk to the parents in the room, uh, you're, I, I realized one key trend that if you go to a restaurant, you see these days, even families who are dining out aren't even talking to one another. They're all looking at their phones. I, have, I just have one bit of advice for you guys. I'm not a parent yet. I want to be. I've married, been married for 10 years. Uh, sorry, 7 years. But we were together for 10 years prior. So, matagal na kami ng ng misis ko. Uh, and we're doing work up. So kung mayroon pala kayo magdasal, isama niyo na kami sa dasal ninyo to, to have a baby. No? Atak na ako magka-baby. Handang-handa na. Yung Sun Life educational plan ko na sinimulan kong pundaran ng first year college, nagmatsug na. Di ba? Siguro, siguro hanggang masters kaya nang bayaran nun. Di ba? Pero wala pa rin. So Lord, pagbigyan mo na ako. But anyway, my point is, if there's one bit of advice I'd like to give the parents in the room, you do not surrender expertise of technology to your kids. Because they can be very good at smartphones, but, they have, but they're not wise when it comes to talking to strangers or social skills. Kayo po yun. So do not surrender expertise and technology. You have to dive in. Mauna kayo. Step ahead of them. Learn it. Wag po tayo matakot sa Facebook. Wag po tayo matakot sa Instagram, sa mga smartphone, sa Snapchat. Alamin po natin lahat yan. Kasi that's your way of going ahead, of being ahead of your kids. So that you can be their shield. Kasi kung wala po kayo doon, mag-isa lang sila. Okay, just a note that I wanted to share. Because I see a lot of uh, parents in the room. Lord, sana maging magulang na ako. Anyway, so, <laughs> so yun. So again, just to give you guys an example uh, of how radical the world has changed over the last few years. And just to put some numbers into it, 
There are now 51 million smartphones in the Philippines, 129 million SIM cards. So yes po, mas marami pong SIM card kaysa Pilipino. Uh, Ganun po ka adi ka mga Pinoy. Uh, we have 69 million Filipinos already who are internet users. And approximately 99% of them, 98% of them are on Facebook. So we are dominantly a Facebook country. Now what does all of these numbers mean? It basically means that today's consumer, regardless of any generation, be it Z, X, Y, or baby boomers, is that they have access to all of this. They are now more empowered than ever. They can get information just like that. They can complain just like that. Nagbago na po ang merkado. Nagbago na po ang consumer. And just to give you guys better context, daan na natin sila isa-isa. Yung Generation XP. Simula tayo sa Generation X. Uh, when it comes to Generation X, you're looking at 40 to 54 years old. Hindi na kailangan magtaas ng kamay. Di ba? So that's projected 15% of total population. Ano yung mga dinaanan nila? Para makita niyo yung context. Martial law. Sharon and Gabby. Uh, VHS. Personal computers. The rise of MTV. Generation Y. Maniwala mo kayo sa hindi. Pasok pa ako dyan. Uh, I was born 1982. So technically, pasok ako. 22.5% uh, of the population. Ang mga naabutan, of course, yung power outages. Naalala niyo yun. Madalas yung brown out. Uh, Marvin and Julina. Na hindi na nagkatuloy ever. <laughs> Uh, sino po ba yan? Angelou and Ding Dong. Ding Dong ba yan? Hindi, Bobby Andrews. Bobby Andrews and Angelou. Naalala niyo yun? PGIF. O, oh, di ba? Or gimmick ba yun? Hindi ko naman naalala. O, oh, tabing ilog si John Lloyd. O, oh, yan. Uh, anyway, kung ano na pinagsabi ko. <laughs> Nung nagsimula yung Windows, MP3 was invented and the rise of the internet. This is the generation that was able to be there without and with. So, right in the middle. And of course, ang pinaka nakakatabot na generation, Generation Z. You're looking at the 10 to 24 years old. They make up, tingnan nyo to, ah, they make up almost 30% of the population. That is your next wave of customers. That is your next market. Ganyan na po ang magiging bagong mukha. Ang kita man ng mukha, no? Huwag ka mukha kami. Maputi lang siya. Uh, <laughs> Pero hindi kami nagkalayo sa, sa cheek size. So, diba? Si Baste, yan. Yeah, may kilala. Uh, and ano yung mga dinaanan nila? They're, they went through, well, not here in the Philippines, but of course, narinig nila, the first black president. Uh, dinaanan nila in terms of love team, mas aldab na sila. Medyo luma na yan, di ba? So sila, sino-sino naman yung mga bagong ngayon. Hindi ko na naalala yan. Masa yung mga bagong love team na medyo bata. Uh, they will live through, they're living through the age of Netflix over TV. Maraming kabataan po ngayon, o bata, lalo na yung mga the younger ages, mas una pa nilang nakawakan ng screen ng iPad kesa manood ng TV. Just a quick question. The last time you were in an outing with your family, was do your kids still actually turn on the TV? Hindi na eh. Hawakan nila at cellphone nila, pagunin nila cellphone nyo, doon na lang sila mananood. Kasi nagbago na nga talaga. They want things, what they want to watch, they don't want what's being shown. They want to watch what they want to watch. Uh, smartphone, social media, and of course, e-commerce. So all of these things, change each of the perception of the generations. So kung isa-isay natin yung perceptions, sa Generation X, nagugulat pa sila. Parang everything is still a surprise. Uy, wow, okay yan ah. Wow, that's cool. Wow, that's awesome. Wow, I didn't expect that. For Generation Y, everything is possible. I want to do this because of technology. I feel empowered. The world is everything. I can do everything. Uh, kumbaga, every ju 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 Yun yung inisip ng Generation N, the Millennial Generation. And of course, ang nakatapot, the Generation Z, for them, everything is the norm. They know, kumbaga, they expect everything already. Sanay na sila sa mga ganyan. Ang mga things na kinakatakutan natin, for them, is status quo. And all of that taken into consideration, this is your Generation XP. It's not just the Generation Z or the X or the Y. Of course, a lot of it will come from the Generation Z. But technology kasi empowers and enables everyone. And everyone can complain. Diba? And everyone can be uh, your customers as well. Now, again, this has empowered them. They demand more and they want things now. And the question we have to ask ourselves is how do we thrive in this era? As businesses, as marketers, how do, are we able to survive? Not just survive, 
but really able to generate revenues and, and create new revenue streams and beat competition in this age where experience is everything, where you have consumers who are hyper-connected and very demanding. At the end of the day, it's this. You have to use customer experience as a key competitive advantage. And throughout this talk, what we'll do is we'll talk through four key points or four key strategies on how you guys can do that. Just a quick definition of the experience economy. This, for me, the best definition of experience economy by the Harvard Business Review. A company intentionally uses services as a stage and goods as props to engage individual customers in a way that creates a memorable event. In short, what you want to be able to do is this. You want to create fond memories with your customers to build loyalty so that you inspire advocates who will spread good things about your brand, which will eventually allow you to thrive. That is, that is pretty much it in a nutshell. But it sounds easy to do, but it's much, much harder actually in reality. Now what we'll be doing in the next few minutes is we will be discussing the four key pillars of customer experience marketing, experiential marketing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, for me, at the end of the day, marketing is marketing. Uh, there's, again, when people ask me, Carlo, what's your digital strategy? But uh, there's no such thing as digital strategy. You just have strategy in the digital age. You know, because we're, we're in the digital age. This is, digital is not supposed to be just a job description. Everybody's digital. Because we're living in the digital age. Actually, by all, default, all of you are digital entrepreneurs. All of you are digital marketers. Because that's where your customer is. You guys understand? So, pagdating dyan, this is what we'll be talking about. We'll talk about usability, customer service, personalization, and community. These are the four important factors when it comes to the experience economy. Let's start with the first one. Usability. Usability is basically products or services that are easier and more pleasant to use uh, because they can command better prices and market share. You need to deliver intuitive, pleasant, and painless user experiences. This is the reason why Apple is able to command such a premium price. The iPhone X sells for, I think the 256 GB model sells for a little over 70,000 pesos. The Samsung Galaxy S8 sells for 40,000 pesos. The cost to manufacture an iPhone X is 18,000 pesos. The cost to manufacture an S8 is 15,000 pesos. You see the difference? iPhone, cost to make, 18,000. How much can I sell it? 74,000. Margin, massive. S8, I can only, I, cost to make, 15,000. How much to sell? 39,000. Apple is able to do that because of their brand, and most importantly, because of the user experience. Because it's easy. Because it's intuitive. You don't need to be a genius to figure it out. Android made a lot of mistakes at the start. Hirap na hirap ang mga tao to figure out the Samsung, Huawei, and all of those other devices early on. But when it comes to an iPhone, an iPad, did you know that the research division has an entire team dedicated so to, to be able to see if their products can pass the four-year-old test? They literally have kids figuring out the tablets and the phones to see if they can figure it out. Alternatively, they have a the department that works them out with the elderly to see if the user experience can be something that a grandmother, a great grandmother, will be able to figure out. That is good customer experience or user experience. And that's very critical with the products and services that we create. Again, the quote from Steve Jobs. I won't read through it because I read it earlier, but I think it's just nice to flash it to remind everybody of the spirit of user experience. Hey, Indiegogo. Now what I'll do next, I'll share you guys a video uh, of a product that puts user experience at the core. And it's interesting because these are the type of products that you will see popping up more in the next few years. Now, I'm not saying it's a great product. I haven't tried it myself, and there are negative reviews about it. Uh, but it gives you a sense of how design thinking or thinking just for the user experience uh, is much better than doing it apart from just technology focus. So I'll let you guys watch the video. Hey, Indiegogo, are you tired of using a remote control for your air conditioner? Well, meet the Touch AC. All you need to do is swipe this baby 
and the room is automatically filled with cool, refreshing air. That's... Look at this imbecile, doing the rain dance, trying to control the temperature. Bouncing like that, I'd probably swell like a pig anyway. When I want to control the temperature, I use Sensibo. It's based on a simple idea, really. Just make me feel good. Hey, Paul and Dan, what's the temperature in the room right now? 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Is it hot or cold? Hot. You see, nobody cares what the exact temperature is. It's just about being comfortable. Sensibo is a device that turns any remote controlled AC into a connected super smart one. So smart, in fact, that if you choose full automatic mode, you'll never have to think about your AC ever again. Sensibo turns up the heat before you wake up in the winter. It cools your house down before you come home in the summer. It's like your mom and dad, just without having to hear about his back problems. Hi, Mom. I'd like to take a brief moment and explain how Sensibo is installed. Oh look, here's the team behind Sensibo. Engineers, designers, visionaries. They've invested years of their lives in this product, not only to make your life more comfortable, but also because of a green agenda. Not that, the other green. Yes, Sensibo reduces the energy your AC uses by an average of 40%, making it good for the planet and for your electricity bill. Personally, I don't care about Earth, but if it doesn't bother me, I don't mind letting it exist. Its app is so beautiful and intuitive, you'll get things done in less than two seconds and spend the extra 20 seconds you just saved on staring at it in admiration. And there's an app for Pebble, too. Live in a rented apartment? Sensible can be moved from AC to AC. Here's how. Sensibo even works with a 20-year-old remote-controlled AC, because an old doll can learn new tricks. Fetch. I don't need your help, but these guys do. If you back Sensibo, they can begin the manufacturing process and improve your quality of life significantly. But more importantly, they'll be able to pay me for being in this video. Thank you. Sensibo. So that was a fundraising campaign for a product called Sensible. So it's pretty much something that if you guys see, the focus really is on the customer experience more than anything else. Not the temperature, is it hot, is it cold, what is the benefit directly to the consumer. So again, that, that's a quick idea of how design thinking is all about. How putting the user experience and the user benefit is critical. So that's just one quick video that I want to show you. Now very quickly, now while I did show the video, there are a lot of negative reviews as well of it not working, of not connecting properly. So there are obviously kinks to technology. But the spirit of showing it to you was really all about focusing on the user experience. Okay, next is customer service. Leveraging excellent pre and post sales service to develop loyal customers that will spread the word about your company. I travel a lot. Uh, and I used to travel mostly with PAL, Philippine Airlines. And then one time when I was going to Barcelona, I took Emirates. Uh, and what happened was we were delayed uh, to the point that next day papala kami makakalipad. So if I was forced to miss uh, several meetings as well as several other vacation stuff that I wanted to do there. Now what's one thing you do if you get uh, pissed about a particular product or service in this age? Uh, back then, that was a few years ago, I tweeted and I tagged like Emirates. Na parang lousy customer service, flight, blah, 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 etc., etc. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised uh, a few day, a few hours later to get an email uh, from their vice president for customer service with free miles of around, like I think it was like 50,000 miles worth. Uh, and like a, an apology for what happened and like compliments na parang if you want to travel with us again, please do so again. Uh, ever since that, I've switched entirely uh, to Emirates each time I would travel because of that pleasant customer experience. So again, creating that initial positive thing can build really loyal customers. It is not enough to just sell. Because if your competitor goes beyond selling and goes to delighting the customer to create those nice memories, you are immediately at a disadvantage. And they will switch because customers today demand more. Okay, so again, that's just an example 
of leveraging customer experience. Of course, there are much more examples. Wag na tayo lumayo masyado. Uh, Fort Strip. Do you guys know Fort Strip? Diba maraming bar dyan na nagbago na yung pangalan over the years. Papalit-palit na names. It's mainly because the customer experience in bars, high-end bars, is not really nice. You line up, you have to pay expensive to get a table, it's so loud, hindi naman siya so super chill. But the bars that are really stay long are the community bars. And yun, I go to one in Makati, it's called Curator. It's one of my favorite speakeasy bars. I've been going there as a loyal customer, mainly because again, of customer loyalty and the, the spectacular customer service that I get. So again, customer service is the second pillar when it comes to the experience economy. The next pillar that I want to talk to you guys about is community. Community is critical. What is community? When a brand becomes a status symbol of wealth or membership in a group, hindi necessarily you have to be a status symbol for wealth. It can be just like a, a membership community type. Uh, wearing the same sneakers as your favorite basketball players, that's the time you're able to create communities around your product and service. So just to give you guys an example, I mentioned earlier that I love sneakers. I'm a sneakerhead, that's what they call it. Uh, and back then, si Kanye West, who collaborated with Adidas, wrapped yung lyrics na to. But the Yeezys jumped over the Jumpman. Jumpman is uh, Air Jordan or Jordan brand with Nike. And back then, uh, Nike or a Jordan brand was way, way, way high, and Adidas wasn't really doing so well. But when Kanye West came on board, he shook things up like crazy. He leveraged his social media influence, he leveraged a lot of other rappers to be able to create insane hype so that the desirability and the hype for products and services they had would be really, really good. And what happened after that? The purchase intent for Adidas overtook uh, Jordan. And one really nice statement came from the, complex, the editors of Complex. Complex is the number one or one of the leading pop culture and sneaker publishers uh, in the US. They said this, Buzz on social media leads to sneaker sales. Kanye West has over 20 million Twitter followers. Michael Jordan doesn't use social media at all. So imagine that, a rapper like Kanye West, as controversial as him, was able to turn things around. Him, of course, with Adidas, their designers and all of that. But it, it, gets, it, it shows you guys the power of eventually, for example, working with like influencers to build communities, uh, to create more compelling types of execution than your usual marketing campaigns. So you're trying to go for... I'll show you one video uh, that emphasizes or creates like hype or creates that hype trade for a particular service. This is not uh, related to your industry, but I, I really found it interesting. It's very recent. It came out this morning. Well, this particular video, but the previous articles about it came out last week. So you're trying to go for diesel the brand, but it's spelled wrong. It's close enough. New York, New York, capital of cool, where people dress to impress, and status is decided by big brands and hefty prices. Unless you don't care about that stuff, and wear whatever the hell you want, even if it's a knockoff. So, in your honor, we opened our own knockoff store. Diesel. What's up, Playboy? Diesel. Authentic. Check it out. Real diesel in there. That, that's not real diesel. Diesel? What do you mean, not real diesel? You know, this is, this is not how you spell diesel, yeah? I spell tomato, you spell tomato. D-E-I-S-E-L. Diesel. D-I-E. Uh, uh, you're not a cop, are you? No. Ah, right, come on, what are you, a nerd? You check for spelling? One for 20, uh -huh. and two for 40. Happy birthday. So look at me. I know style. <laughs> this store has been in my family yeah. one and a half weeks. This is a bad boy. Bad boy here. I mean, you can't argue with quality. You just said that was 20. Now you're saying it's 40. We're, sp look, we're splitting the hairs here, buddy. I mean, I like it. It's a cute butcher, but... 20 bucks. Can I'll do 15. Someone's got 90 bucks. All right. Keep yeah. it trail. Thank you, guys. It's nice. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. a good knockoff. Knockoff? Real diesel, man. Why are you calling me the knockoff? What you thought was a knockoff was actually genuine lemon condition diesel. These are real diesel jeans. Only the logos are fake. Those of you smart enough to shop there got diesel quality at knockoff prices. Proof that your flawed fashion sense is actually a great fashion sense. <laughs> Is 
See, I told you, original. <laughs> yeah, interesting. So they were able to create hype uh, using scarcity to be able to build desirability and communities around the particular product and service. So again, you can create these things you know, beyond just what your product or service does. Another interesting thing, while it's cool to be part of a group, sometimes it works to your advantage uh, if you're not part of a group. So I'm, I'm sure you guys know that Facebook is the biggest thing here in the Philippines, right? But here's the chink in Facebook's armor. Facebook is not cool when it comes to your kids because you guys are there. <laughs> because if there's one fundamental truth of humanity, it's that kids will never see what their parents are doing. Even from the one truth, but most of the time, at school. So parents go ahead of it. Anyway, my point is, so what is happening? Facebook is losing younger users to Snapchat in the US. In fact, eMarketer says that Facebook is expected to lose 2 million users under the age of 25 this year, and Snapchat will grow 1.9 million users in the US. In the Philippines, your kids are going to two channels. No longer Facebook, they're going to YouTube, and they're going to Instagram. That's it. And they're not going to Facebook because most likely you're trying to add them as friends. <laughs> and these kids don't add them. Ayaw nila friends. Hindi nila trip yun. So that's why they're going there. And we did a survey. Uh, please do not... Well, pwede naman mas share. We did a survey in my previous slide. Hindi naman from PLD Kids Smart. Because we did a survey of 200 kids across the country uh, within a certain age range. We asked them one question. Do you maintain multiple accounts on Facebook just to avoid your parents? Anda. Did you know the answer? 70% said yes. 7 out of 10 Filipino kids that we surveyed had multiple accounts. Another account that their parents didn't know about. Right? So just an interesting thing. So again, sometimes it can work in being part of a group is uncool. So sometimes you can be against the grain type of thing when you want to create communities. Next, and this is the biggest trend when it comes to the experience economy. And I cannot stress this enough. It's called personalization. Wherein you create relevance, loyalty, and usage by going one is to one. Where you try to create programs, campaigns, and even products and services that are personalized for your customer. It sounds expensive, but it's actually very much doable. And you don't have to look far to be able to see this in action. Because it can be as simple as writing your name on a coffee cup. It's personalized. And that's why Starbucks is such a big thing. Because they're not selling coffee. They're selling an experience. They're selling cool. They're selling you chatting with your friend, catching up. But that's what they're selling. They're not actually just selling coffee. Everything from the chairs to the lighting to the smell is created for you to enjoy your time there. Your name on a coffee cup. Your name on a Coke bottle. Anapin mo lang. Pahirapan minsan. Diba? Or it can even be a note on your regular yam. Uh, from your delivery guy or whatnot. Or no umuso yan, diba, that it became viral last year. Jollibee actually put uh, post-it notes on all of their regular yam so that you can write it when you give it to somebody. And even this month, when Valentine's here, Jollibee, if you guys, I don't know if you, if you still eat Jollibee, siguro kaya ako ganito kalaki kasi mahilig ako sa chicken joy. Uh, but they actually put Valentine's notes on all of the takeout and the drive-thru. So when you get your package, we note done na uh, Happy Valentine's, ju -ju 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 -ju. and some of the stores will even ask for your name. And magsusulat sila ng poem. Ang galing! So personalization is not, is not supposed to be super expensive that you have to tinker with all of the products and services. It can be how you serve your customer. It can be how you sell a particular product or service. Hindi personalization, ibig sabihin yan, pag inon ko yung aircon, nakalagay high car, no? Well, that's part of it. But... Do you guys understand? It can be much, much more than that. It has to cut across sales, product, marketing, and after sales. Apart from that, let's go a little more complicated. It can be a curated playlist for you on Spotify based on your listening habits. I don't know if you guys do this or if you guys know this. If you run on Spotify, 
they can actually change the music so that it will keep up with your uh, tempo. So pag mabilis ka na tumakbo, bibilis yung kanta. Hindi parang chipmunks ha. So <laughs> pinag-aaralan niyo yung the way you run and then they give you songs depending on your pace. Alam niyo, alam na alam ko dahil magaling ako tumakbo eh. No? <laughs> but anyway, so again, that's Spotify. Facebook, of course, they do this all the time. Special custom videos for you using your data to personally deliver uh, really nice videos, custom videos, personalized videos. That's why a lot of people can't get out of Facebook. It's because of the personalization that happens. And if there's one key learning that I had in all of my trips, especially my trip last year. These are pictures of my trip last year. I went to Twitter, Facebook, Salesforce, LinkedIn, Google, and Apple. If there is one thing I've learned from that trip, it's this. All of these companies, they're investing billions of dollars in personalization because they know that the next battle is all about experience. They know that the next battle is about providing excellent, superior user and customer experience from the time they spot you, to the time they're selling to you, from the time they're using your products, to the time that they're even thinking of letting go of your products, it's an entire funnel that's personalized, customized for the customer. And they're doing it all. Google, Twitter, Salesforce, LinkedIn, everyone. And that is the challenge that we have today. Because companies like them will inspire more and more startups, more and more companies to grow personal to go one-on-one, -on -one and to not just create one product fits all. So again, the four pillars that we talked about today, usability, customer service, personalization, and community. Bakit po may picture ni Julius Babo dyan? Uh, Julius Babo is officially the coolest Tito on Earth because he loves to wear streetwear. So may lix sa mga Supreme Supreme. By the way, kung yung anak nyo gusto bumili ng Supreme T-shirt, batukan nyo. Okay? Well, 8,000 pesos para sa t-shirt ang may nakalagay na logo. Pareho lang po yung t-shirt na yun sa Hanes. So, di ba? So, or Fruit of the Loom. No? Okay. 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 But dapat medyo cool tayo, unique lumad lang. Eh. Fruit of the Loom. Okay, community. Um, so, our key takeaway for today. To build brand love, give customers a memorable experience that they can connect with and participate in. Because at the end of the day, what you need to do is to create memories, to build loyalty, to inspire uh, advocates so that you can thrive. To end, let me share a quote from my late grandfather. He used to tell me this often. Carlo, umiikot ang mundo, hindi pwede nakatayo lang tayo. So to those who, if you're a foreigner, sir, Carlo, the world will keep on moving. You cannot stand still. I hope that in the last 30 minutes that I've been here on the stage, I was able to inspire at least some of you to move with the rest of the world. Thank you very much for your time.